As lawmakers started voting in our state house this afternoon on Governor Gretchen Whitmer's tax proposals, chaos ensued. All those in favor say aye. aye. All, those, all those opposed say nay. Aye. The motion is adopted. You could hear Republicans screaming there as Democrats tried to quickly close the vote. The battle then spilled into the Senate. Political reporter Rick Albin here now with new reaction to what happened. Yeah, just in the past few minutes, I uh, talked with a couple of Democrats. The House voted uh, quickly this afternoon, closed the board really fast, enraging Republicans, and said their voices were being silenced. Then in the Senate, before a vote could be taken, Republicans adjourned while majority Democrats were in caucus. I talked with the Senate Majority Leader Winnie Brinks, who says it won't change the outcome, but I ask if it could change anything else, while Lieutenant uh, Governor Garland Gilchrist says the Democratic plan is better than reducing income taxes. You said this doesn't change anything, and from a legislation standpoint, that's true. Does this change things between you and Republican leadership as you move forward? We're just a few weeks into this legislative session. You guys have four years you have to deal with each other. What does this say about that relationship? I've worked very hard, Rick, to establish positive relationships with members of my own caucus, members across the aisle, and members in the House of Representatives in both parties. Uh, and I think I've got a long history that proves that. Uh, we were doing pretty well up until this moment. Uh, and it's one thing to have differences of opinion on legislation. We can fight those things out through the proper channels, through the procedures that we all have agreed to, through the rules. This was simply a petulant act, uh, and it was really disrespectful to the institution, but more important than my relationship with, with uh, the minority leader is the disrespect this shows for the voters. A working family's tax credit that'd be on average of $3,125. This is real money, real belief that can be available to people right now. So uh, just to be clear, that $800 million that would move would, would kill the trigger on that income tax relief, and you and uh, the governor and Democrats believe that the package that you're offering up is better than a rollback in income tax. Yeah, the package that we're offering up is meaningful and real belief for people that would take effect immediately. And we're not gonna walk out of Michigan family, we're gonna stay here and get it done. Well, one thing that uh, both parties have guaranteed is there'll be a lot of media in the chamber on Tuesday. We look forward to seeing you there. And uh, we appreciate as always you taking the time to do this. I, I cannot wait for you to be there to see Democrats delivering for families. Here's a partial response from the assistant Republican minority leader, Brian Postumas, quoting, this bill was written in secret. Efforts were made to hide uh, and to strong arm members, and uh, Republicans weren't allowed to stand up for Michigan taxpayers and speak against this, violating our right to debate. This is exactly why people across our state don't trust what is going on in Lansing. Even one House Democrat called this, quote, political suicide, and that's exactly what this secret tax hike is, end quote. Now, Senate's so going to be back on Tuesday and they're going to pass it. What Rebel Republicans are upset about is the $800 million that's going to be transferred out that they think will stop a trigger on what they believe would be an income tax rollback that they think didn't, would have gone on in perpetuity. This argument is not over, mm -hmm. but that bill will pass on Tuesday in all likelihood. Okay. Wow. And like she said, we'll be there. Yeah, we will. Rick, thank <laughs> Rick, you. Thank you.